The last time lawmakers raised the debt ceiling was in December of 2021 by $2.5 trillion to a total of $31.4 trillion of total debt. The country reached the new debt limit of the $31.4 trillion in January of 2023. At this time, Janet Yellen, the head of the U.S. Treasury, announced a debt issuance suspension period during which the Treasury takes extraordinary measures to borrow funds without reaching the debt limit. Estimates do vary widely as to when the Treasury will be no longer be able to fund the government, but Janet Yellen has stated this date could be as soon as early June. Others place the date sometime later in the summer. However, political gridlock is going to make any type of bipartisan agreement difficult given the highly polarized political environment in the U.S., and this could lead to a variety of extremely negative consequences. And the time of this could not be worse for the U.S. economy that is trying to avoid an economic recession. The most likely and best scenario is that Congress will agree to raise the debt ceiling before the deadline and the Treasury is able to pay the government's bill on time. Up until a deal is reached, there would be some short-term fallout, but ultimately an agreement is reached before there's any major or long-term damage to the markets and to the economy. But there would be no real meaningful long-term changes to fiscal policy, and we'll likely encounter the same issues with the debt ceiling in the future. Another possible scenario invo involves the president invoking the 14th Amendment. Under this premise, he has the power to order the Treasury to keep issuing bonds and pay the government's bills. This might be invoked if it looks like an agreement will not be reached in time to avoid default. This would undoubtedly face legal challenges and work its way to the Supreme Court, where many analysts believe the court would rule in the favor of the president, and then Congress uh, would then come to a deal shortly thereafter. The consequences under this scenario would include extraordinarily high uncertainty and volatility, and you'd likely see a major sell-off in markets until the Supreme Court rules. In the scenario where the debt limit is breached, the Treasury would need to prioritize who gets paid on time. To avoid a default, the Treasury would almost certainly pay bond bondholders first and delay payments for other obligations such as payments to Social Security recipients and Medicare providers. But there's uncertainty surrounding the legality of this, and again, this would likely be challenged in court. The fallout from such a situation is dependent how long the stalemate lasts and might not necessarily include a sovereign default if Congress is able to reverse course quickly, which it would most likely do given the resulting negative impacts. Also, I want to point out the Treasury doesn't have to default to get a downgrade on the U.S. sovereign rating. In 2011, S&P did strip the U.S. of its triple a credit rating for the first time after the Treasury came within days of being able to pay certain benefits. S&P noted that during this time that the stability and predictability of U.S. policymaking has weakened at a time of ongoing fiscal and economic challenges. Mm -hmm.